Now I want to talk in detail about delay in SRAM cells, specifically read delay. And the reason I want to discuss this in detail is not because there's anything special about calculating delay in SRAM. In fact, all of the components of delay have already been covered. Um, for example, pre-charge delay, word line delay, and cell delay are all very similar to delay in uh, ROM arrays. You just have to uh, take into consideration the series resistance of the access transistors mm -hmm. and the differential nature of, of, of the cells. But there's nothing really uh, challenging about calculating delay in an SRAM array. Mm -hmm. But what I want to talk about is the sequence of operations that happen when you read. Because this, this leads us to a specific topic, which is self-timing in memory reading operations. So the whole idea is, whether your memory is synchronous or asynchronous, what's going to happen is that you are going to uh, give, your, give yourself a clock signal, and you're going to change the address because you want to read from a new address. And then after uh, a specific amount of time has passed, which is defined by the uh, maximum operating frequency of this memory, you can expect the D out bus of the memory to have correct data. So you expect everything to be done between the time that the address has been presented to memory and between the time that the next clock cycle comes. So the problem is there are different things that happen here. For example, we need to first pre-charge the bit lines. Then we need to activate the word lines. Then we need to activate the sense amplifier. And this sequence needs to happen in a specific order and after giving each step enough time to conclude, otherwise we will not read properly or we will not read properly at the proper time. And the problem is you only have one control signal coming from the outside. You could think of it as the initial edge of the clock, but in fact it's the change of address. This is the thing that triggers a read operation from a memory. So memories are by definition sort of asynchronous because they are all triggered by the address bus. And therefore, if you need extra control signals to uh, govern the sequence of operations that happen after that, they need to be generated inter internally. Memory needs to time itself. It needs to do self-timing. And therefore, we, ha we have to figure out how that happens. And to figure that out, we have to uh, take a look at the sequence of operations necessary to co complete a read operation from an SRAM cell. And we have already discussed most of these in detail earlier, but we are just revising them because we need to focus now on the dependencies. So which thing triggers what else? So that's all we're looking at, the sequence and the dependencies. When can you move to the next step? And so, as I said, it all starts with an address change. You could think of this as being um, synchronized to a clock edge, and it's going to happen in a synchronous circuit because you're going to present a new address on a clock signal because the address is going to come from an address generator, which is itself a, uh, a synchronous circuit uh, coming uh, at, the, at the system clock. But the actual thing that triggers the memory is a change in address. So once a change in address happens, this should trigger uh, a pre-charge. So we should pre-charge the bit line and the bit line bar. Now, when we start pre-charging, bit line and bit line bar are going to be at different voltages. When should we stop pre-charging? When should we say that pre-charge has, has finished? We should say that pre-charge has finished once bit line and bit line bar are both equal and equal to VDD over 2. And it's really important to make sure that bit line and bit line bar are equalized. It's more important than guaranteeing that they are at VDD over 2, actually. If they are equalized at different voltages, we are better off. Once pre-charge has finished, we can then uh, disable the pre-charge signal phi and enable the word line. When we enable the word line, we have to wait until the word line signal has reached the last circuit, uh, the last cell. So we, uh, we enable word line from the row decoder, but the word line signal has to travel through the word line wire all the way up to the end of the array. So we have to wait until word the word line signal reaches the last cell in the array and enables it. 
then we have to wait until that cell has developed enough delta V so that we can then enable the sense amplifier. So once this happens, we can enable the sense amplifier. The sense amplifier will then very quickly generate a very large delta V between uh, uh, SA uh, and SA bar, and this can then be read out on the uh, output data bus of the memory of the SRAM. Uh, of course, there's a question, what is enough uh, vo voltage difference on the cell? Uh, and there's a compromise here that has to be done. If you wait uh, longer, you will develop more delta V uh, uh, within the cell. But And this, once we enable the sense amplifier, this allows the sense amplifier to resolve faster. Uh, it's actually, uh, the sense amplifier delays more sensitive to initial delta V than it is to anything else. But of course, the cell is very slow to develop delta V, so we can't wait that long. So, I mean, uh, there has to be uh, some degree of, of, of compromise here. Notice that if you uh, don't allow enough delta V to develop on bit line and bit line bar, if you uh, just immediately switch to uh, the sense amplifier and just develop a really arbitrarily small voltage difference through the cell, then that opens up the array to noise a lot more because uh, noise can flip the uh, way the sense amplifier interprets the signals on bit line and bit line bar, especially because the sense amplifier is a differential amplifier, which is really, really sensitive to mismatches in devices between the two uh, sides of the amplifier, for example. Now, uh, we can calculate each of these uh, delays individually. We can calculate them really easy. Uh, for example, a uh, uh, pre-charge delay can be calculated exactly the same way as in the ROM array. Uh, so you have a lumped capacitance in the bit line because the bit line is metal and it is being uh, pre-charged uh, using the uh, impedance of the PMOS transistor. It's exactly the same way as in ROM. Uh, word line delay is also exactly the same way as in ROM, except uh, for the fact that each cell now uh, loads the word line with two gate capacitances instead of one gate capacitance, because recall that the uh, SRAM cell actually has uh, uh, two, tra two access transistors uh, per, uh, per cell rather than one access transistor per cell. Uh, the cell delay, which is the time that the cell takes to develop a delta V, is also going to be uh, calculated exactly the same way as in uh, ROM arrays, because it's also the resistance of the cell discharging CBL, except that the resistance here is either going to be the series resistance of the access transistor and the cell NMOS, or the access transistor and the cell PMOS. So it's going to be um, a a different resistance from the resistance in the ROM array. What we have to figure out now is how to generate all the control signals that we discussed here, uh, given the fact that we only have one real external control signal, which is the clock that uh, basically triggers the whole operation. Now, the first control signal we have to think about is a control signal that happens when the address changes, because this is the thing that triggers everything else. We don't have to trigger a read operation on every cycle, on every clock cycle. This is wasteful. We need to trigger a read operation when the address changes. And so we have to have a signal, and it's going to be a single bit control signal that is true when the address changes. So this is implemented using this very simple circuit. And this very simple circuit, all it does is it calculates the difference between the previous address and the current address. So we're going to have as many ex XOR bits, exclusive OR, bi uh, ex exclusive OR gates, as there are bits in the address bus. So L uh, uh, exclusive OR uh, gates. And the inputs to the L ex exclusive OR gates are going to be the current address, as well as a delayed ver version of the, of the bit of the address. This delayed version, if we are working with a synchronous memory, could it could actually be uh, delayed by one cycle. So we are calculating if there's a difference between uh, uh, the current address and the address in the previous cycle. If we are working with an asynchronous memory, this is going to have to be uh, a combinational delay. And so this XOR gate is going to produce a one 
when um, the current bit of the address is different from the previous bit of the address. And this OR gate is going to produce a 1 when any of its inputs is equal to 1. So this bit is then going to be 1 whenever there is a change in any bit of the address. And the change in any bit of the address is a change of the address. It's enough to trigger a change of address, which will then trigger the whole operation. Notice that a change of address could immediately tra trigger uh, uh, a pre-charge operation. So, so you could use the complement of the address change bit as a pre-charge uh, as a pre-charge control signal. Notice also that it is not wasteful to pre-charge the bit lines on every cycle. Even in cycles where there is no read, it's not wasteful to, to pre-charge because if we haven't read the previous cycle, uh, pre-charge isn't going to waste any energy because the lines are already at VDD over 2. If we had read, then it's okay to pre-charge now and then read later because it's going to be there's going to be a pre-charge anyway. The next thing we have to do is while pre-charging, we have to guarantee the bit lines are equalized. And the main reason reason is that if you want a certain delta VBL, which is going to be the delta VBL of zero the initial voltage that you present to the sense amplifiers, if you start with the bit line and bit line bar uh, equalized, it's going to take a lot less time for this delta VB to develop. Because if you are not guaranteeing that the bit line bit line bar are equalized, then the cells have to first equalize them and then create the voltage difference. This is pretty uh, simple, right? And then we will trigger the word line which usually happens really short, uh, shortly after uh, pre-charging. Uh, so we will trigger the word line and we have to wait for the word line signal to travel from uh, the row decoder all the way to the last cell uh, uh, in the array, to the end of the row. Uh, once that happens, this cell is going to be enabled and it will start to create a delta uh, VBL. Of course, all the previous cells in the array would have created a larger delta VBL if we wait for this one to create our minimum acceptable delta VBL, but that's okay. That only means that they are going to finish faster when the sense amplifier is, is enabled. Once the cell has finished creating this delta VBL, we can then enable the sense amplifier and let it take off from them. Uh, the sense enable signal is particularly hard to generate because it comes at the end, so it comes after a lot of other operations have concluded. And so the sense enable signal is generated from the address change, right? And then we have to give um, we have to give it enough time so that we also account for the time that um, that it takes for the word line signal to travel through the entire word line. So this is called the row decoder replica. So address change, and then we give it enough time to simulate the time to reach the end of the array, and then we give it enough time to simulate the time it takes the cell to generate a, a enough delta V cell, and then we can give cell sense enable. So what are these two blocks? What are the row dec decoder replica and cell de delay replica? All they are doing is they are introducing uh, delays to this control bit so that this control bit, when it exits them, it exits them at the same time that uh, enough delta VBL has been created by the cell. So this guy is trying to imitate the delay of the row decoder and the word line. This guy is trying to imitate the delay of the cell as it creates delta VBL. So let's look at them from the inside. Um, now, this is how a decoder looks, a decoder, row decoder, we're going to look at it in detail later, but the row decoder is a series of NAND gates driving the word line, uh, which is represented here using a uh, lumped capacitance. And so um, how are we going to replicate this delay? Uh, we're going to create a circuit, which is the uh, row decoder replica, which consists of uh, a series of inverters driving a capacitance. So uh, we are going to create a capacitance here. And there are challenges here. We have to size these inverters, and these are small inverters, right? So that they imitate 
the logical effort of these NAND gates. So that this whole uh, buffer chain has the same delay as a, uh, an active chain in the row decoder. We also have to make uh, some effort, we have to invest some effort in uh, mimicking the word line capacitance, especially that the word line is not actually a lumped capacitor. So this is really challenging. The word line has a, a significant resistive component and we cannot imitate this. So we have to, um, you have to um, kind of fudge the numbers a little bit so that this lumped capacitor accounts for the RC delay of the word line. Similarly, the cell delay replica is going to be a single cell, right, per column perhaps, uh, which is a dummy cell. It's not storing anything, but it's just imitating the delay of the cell, right? Uh, but we want this cell to produce a, a full swing so that we have sense enabled produced out of it when the cell has uh, created only delta VBL of zero. So when the cell creates delta VBL of zero, the replica creates a difference of VDD. And therefore, we are going um, uh, to uh, load this de cell delay replica circuit with a uh, relatively small metal line capacitance. So we're gonna uh, load it with a very small or short uh, piece of, uh, of metal line instead of loading it with the entire bit line. Why? I mean, we are trying to imitate the delay of the cell, of the specific cell, so we should load it with the exact same bit line. No, because we want it to produce a much larger swing relative uh, to the cell. So uh, if we consider the delay is proportional to capacitance, then this line will have to be um, shorter than bit line by as much as delta VBL is zero is smaller than VDD, which is a small ratio. It's a very small ratio. If we pass through these two dummy cells, then we are going to enable the, cell, the sense amplifier when we can guarantee that there's enough delta VBL here to have a good reading.